Be nice, strong, and respect yourself first. The kind of advice we are tired of. So I started to look for a better answer. And that's how I stumbled upon the most controversial man of the Renaissance era. The one who completely mastered human nature and wrote a book so powerful that was banned for centuries. Niccolo Machiavelli. Throughout his political life, he discovered that respect comes from the balance between love and fear, aka reward and punishment. What does this mean? The reward is the positive behavior you apply when someone treats you well. This includes things like smiling, listening, helping, and other stuff like this depending on the situation. But if you reward people too much, they will only see you as a nice guy and lose their respect for you. So you have to use punishment. Now this is the behavior you apply when someone is disrespecting you. There are a lot of scenarios in which this can happen, but the most frequent one is during a conversation. So let's say that you get interrupted while you're speaking, this is what you have to do. Don't stop talking, raise your voice over theirs, and keep the same pace. If you are confused, just watch how Joe Rogan does it here. And kickbox with him, you know he's not skillful at it. Agreed upon. Let me Agreed tell you upon something, that's not, that's not fair not at all. Not jumping him in an alley. So, even, if he's, uh, even if he's 100 pounds heavier than you. Now, personally, I don't really like this technique. It's a bit rude and implies going down to the other person's level. So what I really like to use is called the assertion message. This is a technique in which you express what bothers you about the other person without getting into a conflict. And it's made out of three parts. A description of their behavior, a disclosure of how that made you feel, and a clarification on the effect that it had on you. Here's an example. When you interrupt me, I feel annoyed because I have to raise my voice in order to be heard. As you you can see this is way more diplomatic compared to an answer like this and, and if you if i don't know you then please why? stop interrupting me <laughs> the thing is another way in which you can respectfully punish people is disagreeableness in 2011 a study made by van cleef and other researchers revealed that people who set strong boundaries and say no confidently are more respected than those who agree all the time or use weak excuses so, be clear on your boundaries and people will start to respect you more. But you have to be careful. If you punish people too much for their behavior, they will not respect you because they will start to hate you. As Machiavelli said, a great leader is both loved and feared. So you have to find a balance between reward and punishment in your social interactions. Yet all of these things are pretty much useless if you don't come from a position of power. AKA, no one will take you seriously if you are shy, anxious, and look like you're scared of their opinions. Number one, get a deeper voice. In order to do that, I want you to put your hand on your stomach. Now look at it very closely. Does it move when you breathe? If it doesn't, that means you are shallow breathing. This causes you to have a high-pitched, nervous voice. From now on, try to take deeper breaths, allowing your hand to move while inhaling and exhaling. This will naturally give you a deeper voice. Number two, use a firmer handshake. A study by Dr. Nicholas Knapp in 1997 showed that a firm handshake activates the dominant signaling parts of the brain. This makes others subconsciously see you as stronger and more confident, so they will be more likely to respect you. Number three, stop using filler words like um, uh, like, uh, you know, I mean. The problem is because you think too fast, you're losing your ideas along the way. But it's actually pretty simple to avoid making these verbal mistakes. Just speak more slowly and put more emphasis on every word. That will give you more time to arrange your ideas in your head. Specifically, you can decelerate the second half of every phrase. So instead of speaking like this, I really like action movies like... Um, Jurassic Park is one of my favorites. Try this. I really like action movies. Jurassic Park is one of my favorites. Number four, take more space during the interaction. You can do this by gesticulating, getting more distance between your arms and your body, and fixing your posture. Fixing your posture is probably the most important one. In 2004, it was discovered that each additional inch of a man's height correlates with an income increase of approximately $789 per year on average. Sorry. <laughs> Personally, I'm 5'10", but God bless y'all short kings. There is a quick technique that will help you fix your posture and seem a bit taller. Stretch what's tight and strengthen what's weak. So you have to stretch your chest, hip flexors, and neck. On the other hand, you have to strengthen your upper back, core, and glutes. 
By applying all this stuff, you have now reached a superficial level of respect. But in order to keep others' respect in the long run, you have to do something different. You have to earn it, like Genghis Khan did. Back then, the Mongol leaders were only chosen based on family status, so the system was entirely corrupt. But fortunately for him, he was the son of a tribe leader, so Genghis Khan was next in line. But when he was only nine years old, his father was poisoned by one of his rivals. After that, that his family was seen as weak and not worth protecting, so the tribe abandoned them. As he grew older, he gained more and more power by winning small battles. With time, he hired the best warriors from all the states that he was conquering, he built an army of horse archers who were trained from childhood, and were able to shoot accurately while riding at full speed. By becoming an extremely competent leader and conquering land from Romania all the way to South Korea, he gained an absolute amount of respect, not only from his allies, but also from his enemies. And that's exactly what you have to do in order to obtain true respect. Become incredibly competent at something. Now you have to know this, Genghis Khan didn't become competent because he was a born genius. Instead, he became competent because he managed to think outside the box. He even used one of the first attempts at biological warfare in history. How? By catapulting diseased bodies into cities. If you want to learn how to think outside the box, just like Genghis Khan did, I know just the video.